Hi YouTube, this is Joe Kelton with Kelton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, keltoncutlery.com. So I got the microscope and the TV and everything out, right? Shooting an awful lot of videos on those. I think I've got uh, two or three more left to shoot, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the spare TV back downstairs and, and put the fancy camera up and all that kind of stuff. But first, the last video was using that, um, that Dan's Translucent Arkansas to put an edge on my Victor and Knox Tinker, the large blade, right? Um, so first of all, we've got to get that edge off of there. Okay, so um, in that video, we went over um, different or uh, sharpening, sharpening this knife on that stone with two different uh, lapping finishes on the stone, one for each side. We did some rope cutting tests and the big takeaway was, you know, with those really polished edges, uh, and this one was approaching a mirror, in fact, um, yeah, hazy mirror, yeah, I could call that a hazy mirror, um, those uh, really polished edges uh, take a lot more force to cut through things like rope, uh, leather, uh, wood, you know, things like that. Um, you know, you got to love them when it comes time to shave your face, but you know, and they're kind of impressive, you know, when you pull out a knife and you show your friends, hey, look, you know, I put that mirror finish on that edge right there. Any other time, honestly, um, put a coarser edge on it. In fact, that's what we're about to do. So, while I got the camera and everything out, we are going to show you. And I needed to, um, did we time out already? On the camera here? Oh, there, there we go. Um, when I sharpened it, uh, I could tell that, well, we put through like, oh, I think we probably made, oh, I don't know, maybe 500, 800 cuts in manila rope. So we thickened up this edge considerably, you know, sharpening it uh, with a different media. Um, and it was starting to get kind of thick already anyway, so we're going to lay this back some. Now, first of all, what we're looking at is this is, you know, what's left of that, that polished edge. Um, you can see it's, it's very, very smooth, okay? There's, there's no real teeth to, to speak of. This right here where the light's reflecting on the edge, that is where that edge has been rolled over like that from the amount of force that it took to cut through the rope. Um, that last test, um, with this real polished edge, it took 15 pounds of force to make the first cut through the rope, and then it took almost 20 pounds, well, it took 19 and a half, 20, and 22 pounds to make four different cuts in that manila rope at the end of the test, and that was just after 50 cuts. So that amount of force was rolling the edge over. Okay, because you're just putting, I mean, that's an awful lot of force to put, you know, on, on uh, an edge. So anyway, so what we're going to do is clean all this up. Um, we're going to go ahead and take this right here, which is the shoulder of the edge, and we're going to lay it back to about here or so, maybe even up in here. Okay, lay that edge back, clean this bevel up, make it all one nice continuous bevel, and we're going to do all of that with a, uh, a brand new stone to me. Brand spanking new. So let's get you over here and we'll introduce the stone. This stone, I'm pretty excited about it. Okay, so now that I know how to lap, um, lap oil stones, you know, and freshen them up and everything, um, this one right here was my mentor. Okay, so you guys know that uh, my mentor is, is Ed Fowler, right? Okay, well, this is his favorite stone, the Norton Fine India. Um, him and Wayne Goddard, it was both of their favorite stone, right? I got the stone, um, my first one. It was a two by eight by one, and um, right out of the box, boy, I loved it. I mean, it, it made some really nice toothy edges that were still on the fine side, right? Well, then after I used the stone for, you know, I don't know, 50 knives, something like that, then it glazed over and it quit cutting right. Well, then, you know, I mean, I tried flattening it with several different things, and I never could get it to cut very well after that. 
And so, you know, it's sat in a drawer the, this whole time. Well, this particular stone right here, I mean, brand new, okay, from sharpeningsupplies.com. I think it was like $64. This is a Norton Fine India and a Norton Medium Crystalline, which I have never played with the, the Medium Crystalline. I've uh, played with the coarse, I like it. Played with the fine, I like it. Um, I think I'm really going to like that medium. But we shouldn't need the medium on this one. So anyway, so that nice polished edge, yeah, let's just take that completely. Oh, that stone feels really nice up underneath the knife. So let's get rid of this polished edge. In fact, there towards the end of all that sharpening, I was just sharpening um, the portion that I knew we were going to be using for the test. Okay, we are not quite there yet. Now I've laid it back considerably. Now when I talk about laying this, uh, the knife back, okay, so that right there is flat on the stone. You guys won't be able to see that all that well. And you're on a different stand than when I normally, well, we might be able to get away with this. By the way, that's the stand that you guys normally sit on. See how it's, it's just a chunk of half inch steel plate? So it's really wide and really heavy. Oh no, this will work. This will work. Okay, so... Okay, so if that is flat, the... Um, the blade bevels, okay, so this right here would be flat all right, to the tang, right? This right here is flat to the blade bevels, all right? This right here is, let's see, there's the flat right there of the existing edge bevel, and I'm trying to lay it back to here, okay? What that, ha what that does is it really, it thins that edge out considerably. Okay, and cutting is all about, well, geometry, steel type, hardness, all that kind of stuff. But generally speaking, the thinner you can go, the better cutting performance you're going to get. Because you put less stress on the, the edge, because it doesn't have to um, force its way as much through everything it is you're cutting. Okay, so I'm almost there. I'm going to get up in here a little bit. Now up around the point, y'all hear how that stone's cutting? That's a nice cutting stone there. Okay, so we got the beginnings of a burr all the way along one side. Now we're going to do it on this side. So that's the, the blade bevels, right? Okay. That's the edge angle that's already on it. So now we're going to lay it back to about there. Now, one thing to be careful with, um, with these softer stainless steel pocket knives, and it really is only a problem the first couple of times you use it. Okay, when you're laying an edge back like this, or if you're like doing a regrind on a pocket knife, you might not be able to take it as thin as what you would like, because that soft stainless won't hold uh, as thin of an edge as um, you know a good high carbon uh, steel at a higher hardness will so that's something that that I generally speaking have a little bit of a problem with um, is I take it down a little bit too low and then the steel won't support that edge but the beautiful thing about that is that the edge will go dull, you'll resharpen it, and then thicken up the edge a little bit when you resharpen it. So it's kind of a, um, or you'll use it less hard and uh, be easier on that edge until it thickens up some. So it's kind of like you and the knife learning each other. Okay, so we've got that edge laid back considerably more. So now let's go ahead and weaken it, or uh, refine the burr and weaken it. Oh, 
Oh yeah. I tell you, after doing that last couple of videos on that uh, that soft arc at uh, at pretty high polishes on the stone, and then that translucent, getting back to a normal working stone is really nice. So we float. What you saw, we just flooded the oil, right? What that does is it gets rid of most of the swarf and the steel particles and everything, floats them off to the side so that um, uh, we have nice, fresh, uh, fresh, clean surface to remove that burr. So removing the burr. So if that there's our ed edge bevels, or blade bevels, that there's our new edge bevels, we're going to shear that burr off at about like this, okay? It's a lot, sometimes it's hard to tell with these narrow blades. And this is very, very light, like weight of the knife only. Or if you have a heavy knife, um, pick up on the blade so you're not using the whole weight of the blade. Okay, we'll draw that through some soft wood to pull off any of it that we uh, that we missed. Okay, there we go. Now we should have a nice, good working edge. So we'll put you up here. We'll put you up there. Now that last cut test that we did with this blade with that highly polished finish on the edge it was 15 pounds to make the first cut through the manila right now first we better shave so that you know yes it does shave uh, it's taking them yeah there we go it's taking them all right so now we're at one to two pounds or so holding force on the rope, right? And here we go for the first cut. Maybe eight. Yep, about eight-ish or so, okay? So a huge difference in the amount of force that it takes to uh, complete a cut with a coarser stone versus a finer stone, okay? Now, if you want to, you can think about that like, um, like a hacksaw, okay? So, you take a hacksaw blade, um, and they, you know, let's say you wore out your old hacksaw blade, and you need to run down to the store to get a new hacksaw blade. Well, hacksaw blades come in teeth per inch, okay? So, uh, well, let's see, I should have one right here. Of course, I would think of this. There. Okay. So, hacksaw blades. Here's a Nicholson one. Uh, you know, you got your length, right? But then this right here is the really important part. It says 32T. It says it's for metal and that it's flexible. All right? So, hacksaw blades come in different teeth per inch. Okay, so this is a 32T. I think they go all the way down to maybe, I don't know, 12 teeth per inch. So, uh, so the TPI, or this just says T, but they're teeth per inch. So, this blade has got 32 teeth per inch. Let's look at that up underneath the scope since we have the scope. Oh, actually, you know what? We ought to take a look and see what that edge is that we just put on there before we go looking at anything else. Yeah, now see that? This is a working edge, okay? We do have a coarser scratch pattern. Actually, let's pull it up and see the whole thing.
Okay, see how we've really cleaned this up? So now we have one nice plane from the shoulder of the edge to the very cutting edge, right? See how sharp the edges of all these scratches look? That's because that's a nice fresh stone. Maybe a little bit too fresh. I don't know what they, they lap them with at the factory. It feels fairly aggressive. But I'll use it for a little bit and then uh, lap it with the, um, the 220 grit uh, compound. Now this here. See all these little scratches? As they come off the edge, those are in individual little teeth. Okay? And those teeth are what's doing your cutting on a pull, uh, you know, on a, on a draw or on a um, forward uh, slicing type motion. Okay? Uh, a push cut is where you just go straight down. I hardly everything, ever cut anything like that. I'm always cutting on a pull or on a push like that. That's where these teeth come in handy. Okay? So now, if you think about those teeth as in like a hacksaw blade, Now that right there gives you some some uh, some idea of the scale that we've got going on here with this microscope. Okay, if this is 32 teeth per the per inch, and only three of them fit inside the uh, inside the screen, this is a 27 inch TV. Okay, so in a 32 tooth per inch blade, you got 32 of these teeth per inch, right? Now that's considered pretty fine for a hacksaw blade. I mean, that you get at Home Depot. I'm sure you can do custom orders and they'll be quite a bit, uh, you know, quite a bit more. Um, so a 32 tooth per inch hacksaw blade would be considered a fine blade and you would use it for uh, pretty much just steel, okay? Um, if you get the ones that I use on my bandsaw, they are, um, for steel, I usually use like 24 tooth per inch. For wood, I use uh, 10s or 10-13. So it'll have 10 tooth per inch for an inch, and then it'll have 14 tooth per inch. And then it'll have 10 tooth per inch, and then it'll have 14 tooth per inch. Um, but the coarser, or the, the fewer number of teeth per inch, the coarser that blade is, and the more suited it is to things like, um, uh, well, pretty much wood or plastics, uh, brass, copper, you know, softer stuff. And the higher teeth per inch you would use for like metals and such. Well, we don't really cut metal with a pocket knife, right? Generally speaking, with a pocket knife, you're cutting things like wood and leather, um, string, uh, trimming your fingernails, opening mail, things like that. All of that stuff really suits a coarser edge. Um, the finer edges you use for shaving your face or, you know, the final pill finished cuts on like a, like a, a wood carving or a, a something like that that you're making. Um, so generally speaking, I like something that's in the range of two to a 400 grit finish. Although lately I've been playing with soft Arkansas and hard Arkansas. There's one from Natural Whetstone Company. Um, that are up to maybe an 800 tooth per, or 800 grit finish. And those are a little bit high, uh, on the high end of what I like, but they're pretty good. So anyway, that's enough rambling on this video. Um, now that my pocket knife is, is back into, into shape to, to start actually doing some work instead of just impressing folks with, you know, how easy it takes hair off my arm and, uh, you know, how, how polished the edge looks. So this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.